If you're like most people, the thought of eating live bugs would probably turn your stomach. However, studies have shown that consuming living probiotic organisms can actually be good for you. But what exactly are probiotics? Probiotics are live microorganisms that when consumed in adequate amounts offer health benefits. I like the term as to eat bacteria and get cultured. The probiotic concept in theory is simply that when you eat good bacteria at high levels and safe bacteria that we've been consuming in fermented foods for uh, centuries as humans, when you consume that higher level of microorganisms is that you're, you're replenishing those organisms in our gastrointestinal system that actually modulates us to help prevent disease and infections. According to Professor Todd Kleinhammer, one of the most common probiotic carrying foods is yogurt. If you think about this amount of yogurt, um, that's the size of my thumb, when you eat that amount of yogurt you're eating a hundred million bacteria and they're alive and when they're delivered at those levels or those amounts that those bacteria can elicit a health benefit. Studies reveal that the health benefits from consuming specific probiotics are due largely to the impact they can have on the immune system or how they can impact the microbes colonizing the digestive tract in the body. Live microbes are incredibly important to our health. That they are, they colonize us at 10 times the number of cells that are present in your body. So if you go back 7,000 years, man has preserved different kinds of foods by fermentation. And that fermentation is good bacteria that grow on that food and they, they make lactic acid, they acidify that food, and when we eat those foods we're eating bacteria by, by every standard. Over the last several years, a number of independent studies have shown that the consumption of probiotics can actually boost your immune system and decrease the incidence of maladies such as colds and infections. Help prevent colds or flu, prevent enteric disease, elicit tolerance to lactose, and there's good evidence now that's appearing in the scientific literature that certain probiotic cultures can help with inflammatory bowel type diseases. Studies have also proven that people who consume products such as yogurt with live probiotic cultures are better able to digest lactose as well as experience a decrease in gastrointestinal symptoms associated with constipation and irritable bowel syndrome. Still, more studies have shown that probiotics given with antibiotic therapy have been proven to decrease the incidence of antibiotic associated diarrhea in children and adults. We are at a very important time in this field because we know the bacteria, we understand what the potential benefits are, and science can now measure what the health impacts are in very, very specific ways. When we consider the fact that these microbes are important for our health and physiology, then it's not too far of a step to say, well, maybe if you add a probiotic or a microbe externally that isn't a normal colonizer, but we add it to our diets, that maybe we can have an impact on these same functions that our colonizing microbes have. An expert on the subject of food cultures, Dr. Mary Ellen Sanders says studies have also shown that probiotics can decrease incidence of some allergies in infants, vaginal infections in women, and reduce the duration of infectious diarrhea in children. We know that as these microorganisms, for example, pass through the intestinal tract um, in the small intestine, they have an opportunity to communicate very intricately with the immune cells that are very concentrated in our, in our small intestine. They also have an opportunity when they hit the colon to produce antimicrobial agents that um, help decrease the um, numbers of pathogens or potentially bad bacteria that might be present in your in your gut. The probiotic organism must be live at the time of consumption in order for the human body to obtain its full health benefit. So one has to think about the kind of bacteria. They have to think about how to prepare that bacteria in a, in a viable, alive state and then present it in a food or delivery system that will maximize its survival 
as we consume it and it passes through the GI tract. It's important to realize that the level of probiotics that you need to consume for a benefit has to be tied to a specific study that's shown to have a benefit for the specific probiotic that is in your product. Manufacturers of probiotic carrying products face certain obstacles keeping the microbes alive in consumer products as they make their way through the packaging and distribution process and arrive on store shelves. Maintaining the viability of microbes in commercial products through the end of shelf life can be a challenge. Viability depends on many factors such as how the microbe is grown and stabilized and how it is handled. Storage time, temperature and exposure to moisture are all important factors once the microbes are in the product. It's important to realize that just because a particular product has more probiotic than another product does not necessarily mean it's better. You'd be better to choose a product that's been tested and shown to have benefits even if the level delivered in that product is lower than an untested product that is delivering higher levels. There's an array of probiotic products on the market worldwide and there are many ways in which to consume them. In addition to being sold as foods, probiotics are sold as dietary supplements, medical foods and drugs. Although no probiotics are currently sold as drugs in the U.S., often these products are composed of concentrated dried microbes packaged into capsules, tablets or sachets. My advice to a consumer is if they're looking for a specific benefit, they need to do their homework before they go shopping. Yogurt is perhaps the most common food that carries probiotics, but the market has expanded beyond just yogurts. Many forms of cheeses, milks, juices, smoothies, nutrition bars, and even teas, pastas, and infant formulas are foods that can deliver healthy probiotics to your body. So it's interesting to actually look at a product and see what types of information is provided on the labels. So in this particular case, this product is a yogurt and it does specify on the product that it contains 1.4 billion live active probiotic cultures. So that's a good thing that this label has included a level. So at least you know how many of these live cultures you're getting. It does specify a probiotic bacterium and in this case it's Bifidobacterium lactis, but unfortunately they don't provide a strain designation. Probiotics are already improving the health of millions of people around the world. The consumption of probiotics here in the United States will eventually catch up with that of Europe and Asia. It might have to do, for example, with Europe's um, acceptance of cultured dairy products as an important component of the daily diet. So this whole idea of the benefits of live cultures is maybe a little bit more ingrained. Um, in Japan, they seem to be very focused on, on their, the health of their intestinal tract. With further studies, new health benefits of probiotics will be revealed. The number and types of probiotic products will likely increase. So in terms of the future, I, I think some of the very interesting areas that are being uncovered for example, are um, ones that are showing the importance of microorganisms in certain types of metabolic disorders, such as um, diabetes, insulin resistance, and even obesity. There, um, we know that microbes play a role in those conditions. To what extent ultimately probiotics may be able to be found to have a role in those as well would be, I think, a fascinating future area. For a copy of this CAST publication, please visit cast-science.org.